Hello, welcome to another video. So when you get a question that says, find the point or the points where the tangent to a curve is horizontal, they're just saying, where is the derivative of that function equal to zero? Because remember that when you have a horizontal tangent, it has a slope of zero. So the question is just, when you take f prime of x and you get zero, solve the equation and find the points. Okay, so that's all we've got to do. We need to find all the points where the derivative is equal to zero. That's the meaning of a horizontal tangent. The derivative is equal to zero. And that's not going to be a tough thing because you already know how to differentiate. Let's do it. So let's take the derivative of this function. Let's do f prime of x. f prime of x will be equal to, if we take the derivative of 6 sine x, we're going to get, well, the 6 stays, and the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Okay, plus, if we take the derivative of sine squared x, we have to treat it as if it is sine x squared. So we apply the chain rule, it's going to be 2 times sine x, and then we take the derivative of sine x itself, which is going to be cosine x. Okay, you have to know how to differentiate this. You have to treat sine squared x to be the same thing as sine x, sine x squared, so that when you take the derivative of this, what you're doing is you bring down the power and you write sine x raised to power 1, but you now have to go differentiate the inside using chain rule, which gives you cosine x. So that's how we came about this. So now we know that when the tangent line is horizontal, the derivative of the function is equal to 0, because the, the tangent line has a slope of 0. All horizontal lines have 0 slope. So we're going to say that f prime of x is equal to 0, when tangent is horizontal. So this is the picture you should have in your mind. You should have this picture here. You have, and you're looking for all the points where the tangent line is horizontal. This point, you want to know this point, you want to know this point, you want to know this point. You see, those are all the points with, and here too. Okay, and you see this goes on forever, so you're not going to get, there is no restriction on the problem, so we won't get one or two or three answers, we're going to get infinitely many answers. Have that at the back of your mind too. Okay, so let's do this. 6 cosine x plus 2 sine x cosine x is equal to 0. We need to solve this and find the values of x. What's common to this and this? I know cosine x is here, and I know 2 is also here, 2 is here. So I'm going to take out 2 and cosine x. And what's left? Here I'm going to have 3, and here I'm going to have plus, what do we have? Sine x. Nice. Equals 0. So remember, when the product of any two things is 0, one of them has to be zero, or both of them have to be zero. So this is a product, as you can see. So it's either this is zero, or this is zero, or both are zero. So we can say 2 cosine x equals zero, or 3 plus sine x is equal to zero. So let's see. Um, let's take care of this first. The way you look at this, it means that if you move this 3 over or you subtract 3 from both sides, you're going to have sine x equals negative 3. Now this is impossible. The value of sine x cannot be greater than 1 or cannot be less than negative 1. Remember, the absolute value of sine x is 1. So any number greater than 1 is not a valid answer. Um, so we can't deal with this. We just say um, not valid. So this is invalid. There is no real value of x for which sine x is negative 3. Okay, if you get any number greater or than 1 or less than negative 1, 
after taking sine x, you know that there's a problem with your calculation. So not valid, we're not gonna take this. Okay, so the focus is now on this. Two cosine x is equal to zero, which means if you divide both sides by two, you're gonna get, which implies that cosine x equals zero divided by two, that's zero. So the question is, what angles would you have on the graph of cosine x that would give you zero? Okay, what are the angles where you're gonna get zero and zero and zero and zero and zero? Well, if you've forgotten, you might just catch the graph of cosine. See, the graph of cosine goes this way. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, that's what you have. Now remember, you're looking for the point where the cosine x is equal to zero. Okay, what values of x will give you cosine x being zero? Cosine x is zero every time this crosses. So do not use these, okay? Because this, these, this is for the main function. So when you get here, you just wanna solve this. Cosine x is zero where? If this is the graph of cosine x, then you're looking for this point and this point. And you know, or if you have your unit circle memorized, you could at least find these values. So we know that x must be equal to arc cosine of zero. So we get pi over two for the answer to this. Remember that the range of arc cosine, what comes out of this, is between zero and pi, okay? I know that it's possible to get another answer, but what you wanna do is you don't, you don't wanna go beyond the range because this is gonna be three pi over two and three pi over two is greater than pi. Okay, so we just stop here and then see how many times this is gonna happen. If you look at this, zero occurs, if you keep adding pi, you go again, you get another pi, okay? If you keep going again, there's gonna be another one here. So it appears that every time you go from pi over two, you add pi to it, you're gonna get another zero for the value of x. So we can say, that x is equal to pi over two plus pi. How many times would you have this pi? As many times as possible, so you multiply this by n. So you can leave your answer like this, as pi over two plus pi n, and some people write it in other ways, but this is the better way to write it because you know where it starts, or at least the reference point, and then how many times it's gonna repeat is when you have this. If it doesn't repeat, this is your answer, because this would be zero. If it repeats, then it repeats once, then you have pi over two and this one, and then the next one, and then the next one. Okay, so we know that the tangent is horizontal when x is equal to pi over two plus n pi or pi n. Let's write it as n pi, such that n is equal to zero, one, two, tap, 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 tap. And that's the answer you wanna get. So these are all the points where the tangent to that function is horizontal. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.